It's true, climate is changing. The Earth is warming. We know it's happening because of the increase in atmospheric greenhouse gases due to human activities. Can we adapt to it? Probably yes. Humanity has survived past climate changes. Many past civilizations flourished under favorable climatic conditions, and some collapsed when climate became more adverse, like the Roman and Mayan empires. And what's going to happen? With the increasing global temperature, we can expect faster and bigger changes in the environment, leading to changing climatic conditions with varying implications for different regions of the planet. Droughts, heat waves, and more frequent extreme weather events will affect, above all, children, the elderly, the sick, the malnourished, and the socio-economically disadvantaged. Extreme climatic events are not necessarily linked to climate change. However, climate change may make them more frequent, longer lasting, and stronger, and thus potentially more devastating. As a consequence, all these future changes might force human migrations and geopolitical instabilities. Due to changing climatic conditions, some wild animals and flora will also be forced to migrate, if they can, to more favorable regions, putting at risk ecosystem stability and biodiversity. Polar bears, for instance, are already reaching down the Siberian steppes on the lookout for prey. Whenever migration is not possible, fauna and flora might face extinction and the extinction of species could indirectly affect us as well. For instance, studies suggest that loss of biodiversity in the Amazonia and other tropical rainforests, referred to as the sixth mass extinction on Earth by some scientists, might strongly impact the sustainability of our way of living. Ice melting at the poles as well as the water expansion due to the higher temperatures, will lead to an increase in sea level. Predicted to be up to more than one meter by the end of the 21st century. This is important because most of the global population lives in coastal cities. Also, some low-lying islands are at risk of disappearance. Glaciers and polar ice sheets are now the dominant source of sea level rise and will continue to be so in the future. The increase in sea level has a lot of inertia and therefore this rise will continue for centuries to millennia if global warming crosses the threshold of 2 degrees Celsius warming by the end of this century. How do we know that the climate is changing and what's causing it? Scientific evidence for the warming of the planet is unequivocal. We're experiencing the warmest temperatures since we started measuring it more than 150 years ago. Additionally, indirect observation of mountain glaciers and polar ice domes, stalagmites, tree rings, corals, lake and marine sediments further suggest that this warming is unprecedented over several millennia. It is true that there were periods in the Earth's history when the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere was even higher than now. But this was millions of years ago and humanity didn't exist. Modern societies need energy and the main source of this energy has come from fossil fuels such as coal, oil and gas and their burning produces greenhouse gas emissions at an unprecedented speed. When scientists try to reproduce the current global warming with the most powerful climate models, they can only do it when greenhouse gas concentrations from burning fossil fuels are included.
This rules out that the warming trend is caused by natural processes. Only if greenhouse gases emissions are included, these simulations faithfully reproduce the current trend of global warming. How long do we have until climate change is irreversible? Some of the impacts caused by climate change are already irreversible, while others would be attenuated if anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions were to stop soon. Temperatures in 2018 were between 0.9 Celsius and 1.1 Celsius warmer than temperatures in the late 19th century. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the United Nations body for assessing the science related to climate change, we should cut by half the human-induced carbon dioxide emissions by 2030 and reach net zero by 2050 to hold global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius by the end of the 21st century. This requires action right now and radical changes in our energy sources and consumption. Finding ways to sequester some of the CO2, the most important greenhouse gas, could counterbalance part of these human emissions. After decades of discussions, in 2015, a global political consensus was reached in Paris. Following the Paris Agreement that year, leading scientists published a report in 2018 on how to keep global warming below 1.5 degrees Celsius. They determined that every half degree counts to reduce the impacts on our societies and ecosystems. Keeping global temperature increase below 1.5 degrees Celsius is vital to ensure the planet Earth suffers fewer critical impacts on its natural resources and ecosystems. What are the institutions doing about it? The Paris Agreement in 2015 highlighted that climate change was something that needed urgent action to avoid all its striking and costly potential implications. As of February 2019, countries responsible for 88% of the CO2 emissions, 194 states and the European Union have signed this agreement, which provides ways on how to limit global warming below 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius. Under the Paris Agreement, each country determines a plan and regularly reports on its contribution to mitigate global warming. Although the Paris Agreement provides a good global consensus and framework of intentions, there is no mechanism to force a country to set or accomplish specific objectives by specific dates, and this will limit its results. Hence, we need a massive political change which in turn brings an appropriate response to climate change. But this implies collective choices. What can we do? From a bottom-to-top action perspective, we all have plenty of options to help reduce CO2 emissions globally. The sum of all small changes can be very powerful and, in turn, should push governments to take unprecedented changes. Get charged up with renewables. Follow the Green Your Commute initiative. Some scientists are embracing the towards a culture of low carbon research for the 21st century. Or climate scientists say no to flying. Use energy wisely and save money by purchasing energy efficient light bulbs. Unplug computers, TVs and other electronics when not using them. Wash clothes less often. Hang dry instead of using a dryer. Install a programmable thermostat at home. Look for a high efficiency energy label when buying new appliances. Insulate your house to prevent heat from escaping and cold getting in. Eat for a sustainable climate more meat-free meals. Buy local and in season whenever possible, 
to reduce emissions from long-distance transport. Don't waste food, grow your own. Consume less, waste less. Divest from fossil fuels and invest in renewables. Most used renewables are solar, geothermal, bioenergy, hydropower and onshore wind. Renewables like wind and solar are becoming increasingly cheap across the world. Use your bike. Reduces emissions and keeps you fit. Let's help, help our Earth get, get back, back on, on track. track. Are you ready to go?